Welcome to the Virginia Department of Transportation's public hearing for the South Fork Bridge Replacement Project. This presentation will provide you with an overview of the need for this project, followed by a review of the design solutions that are being advanced to remedy both existing and projected travel conditions. We appreciate your interest in this important project. The South Fork Bridge is the major ingress and egress to and from Front Royal and Warren County and serves as a direct access to Interstate 66. The South Fork Bridge is currently classified as functionally obsolete, which is defined by various parameters that are continually monitored by department engineers. The current sufficiency rating of the structure is 35.2 out of a possible 100. No life safety issues exist on the bridge. As reported in the media, the South Fork Deck Truss Bridge is generally constructed in the same fashion as the Minnesota Interstate 35 Bridge that tragically collapsed in 2007. Again, there are no life safety issues which currently exist on the South Fork Bridge. As we advance through the next couple of slides, you'll notice the goal barometer, which will be used to illustrate how well or how poorly each alternative satisfies each goal. Several changes will be required to address projected traffic conditions at the intersections immediately adjacent to the bridge structure. For this reason, our project planners developed a series of project goals and a decision matrix system to help understand the pros and cons of each of the eight alternatives we considered. Project goals included, first, replacing the existing bridge while keeping the roadway open. Current traffic volumes exceed 30,000 vehicles per day and are projected to increase to 51,000 over the next 25 years. Second, to improve safety and provide infrastructure for all users. Each build alternative consists of a six-lane bridge, which will provide sidewalks and bike lanes. Additionally, travel lanes would be widened. Third, to respect our surroundings and important adjacent site conditions. The project neighbors the Riverton Historic District and traverses a river and significant floodplain. Additionally, there are important context areas leading to and departing from the project area. Fourth, to reduce delay and increase capacity. The existing Route 340 and Route 55 intersection operates at failing levels of services. Identify an alternative which will provide access to 18th Street. Most importantly, produce a design solution that acknowledges the life cycle of all planned project investments. Lastly, to identify the best investment of taxpayer money, to identify an alternative which satisfies key objectives while always being mindful of the need to be good stewards of public funds. There is currently no construction funding available for the project. Special allocations had been awarded to begin the design which is currently underway. Due to the scale of the bridge project, special funds will need to be added for construction to take place. Should funding become available, it would take between two to three years to complete. Advancing a project through the public process right now affords the department the potential opportunity to stand ready with a project eligible for a special allocation should one become available. Several traffic simulation programs have been used to analyze alternatives needed to accommodate future traffic volumes. Traffic projections were developed using a host of resources 
and plan documents. The traffic projection for the corridor is significant and will mean that capacity will further degrade. In order to protect the solution that is advanced to construction, it is imperative that this solution meet the long-term needs of the corridor. As such, we have considered a wide array of alternatives that take into the sizable investment and lifespan of the needed South Fork Bridge reconstruction. We have considered alternatives that recognize that 21st century congestion may very well need to be met with 21st century solutions. Of the eight alternatives considered for this problematic intersection, and with public comment received at the citizen information meeting held this past January, the design team concluded that the construction of a quadrant roadway intersection, or QRI, would alleviate both existing and project year 2036 traffic conditions. Most importantly, the QRI will likely improve safety and yield the highest return on investment of public dollars. As you can see, the QRI satisfies all five metrics identified in the goal barometer. We'll spend the next several slides to help you understand how exactly a QRI would work. And then we'll spend some time explaining how it would operate at the intersection of Route 55 and Route 340-522. A quadrant roadway intersection is a promising design for an intersection of two busy suburban or urban roadways. The intersection works by rerouting all four left turn movements at a four-legged intersection onto a road that connects the two intersecting roads. This figure illustrates the geometry of a quadrant roadway intersection where the connection road is placed in the southwest quadrant. Next, this figure illustrates how all four of the left turning movements are rerouted over the connector road. This design prohibits all left turns at the main intersection and allows a simple two-phase signal to process the remaining through and right turn movements. Both junctions of the connector road are signalized, as is the primary intersection. For the purpose of comparison, let's look at the performance of how the quadrant roadway intersection is expected to perform versus the operation of a traditional intersection in the design year of 2036. Let's look at the first column. As you can see, the average signal cycle length, or the total time required to service all competing traffic movements at the signalized intersections, is decreased by 19% using a QRI versus a traditional intersection. Using a QRI, the system-wide delay versus a traditional intersection is reduced by 43%, and the system-wide travel time is reduced by 24%. With a QRI, the average speed moving through an intersection is improved by 57%. And lastly, with a QRI, the average delay or the total time it takes to make your way through the intersection is reduced by an astounding 76%. We've dedicated the next couple of slides to help illustrate how exactly a quadrant roadway intersection would operate at the Route 340 and Route 55 intersection. From this aerial perspective, Interstate 66 is to the north the town of Front Royal to the south, and the town of Strasbourg to the west. This photographic rendering illustrates the before and after conditions of what the new bridge and accompanying QRI might look like following construction. 
To provide a better understanding of how the QRI would work, let's walk through how each movement would operate. First, Eastbound vehicles approaching the 340 and 55 intersection to head south would make a right at the first QRI and another right to head southbound. Second, vehicles heading north to west would make a left at the first QRI and another left to head west. Next, vehicles heading east to north would make a right at the first QRI and then a left to head north. Next, vehicles heading west that are interested in heading south would travel through the Route 340 and Route 55 intersection, make a left at the first QRI then a right to travel south. Next, vehicles heading south wishing to travel east would travel through the Route 340 and Route 55 intersection, make a right at the QRI and another right to head east. To help you understand why a quadrant roadway intersection is superior over a traditional intersection, the following slides will illustrate how far back the vehicle queues would extend under both types of conditions in the year 2036. First, the do-nothing alternative, where we continue to maintain an aging bridge without any changes to the existing Route 340 and Route 55 intersection. The yellow lines indicate how far back vehicles queue for through movements. The light blue lines indicate how far back queues would be for left turns, and the orange line indicates queues for right turning traffic. As you can see, doing nothing to address the intersection and bridge would result in southbound queues which would extend beyond the newly completed North Fork Bridge, and northbound through movement queues would extend past 18th Street the intersection would continue to operate at a failing level of service of F. Second, using a traditional intersection would result in southbound through movement queues of nearly 1,200 feet, extending entirely across the newly completed North Fork Bridge. The northbound through movement queue would extend to the northern termini of the South Fork Bridge, with a backup of nearly 700 feet. The intersection would operate at a failing level of service of E. Last, the quadrant roadway intersection would result in southbound queues that intermittently back to Duck Street and a northbound queue of about 300 feet. There are no queuing issues for either the east or westbound movements. The QRI would both operate at a level of service of A and the Route 340 and Route 55 intersection operating at a level of service of C. The following animations further illustrate the performance of both a traditional intersection and quadrant roadway intersection. First, the traditional intersection. The traditional intersection would involve the addition of several new turn lanes. Traveling north, you'll notice the left turn lane stacking and how the inside through vehicles are blocked by vehicles attempting to enter the left turn lane. As we continue north, notice the number of vehicles heading southbound and how far back they are stacking. Nearly the entire length of the North Fork Bridge.
This condition is expected to occur each weekday evening peak hour. Next, the Quadrant Roadway Intersection. As vehicles travel north, note the lack of congestion. Movement is accomplished in three primary ways. Number one, by using a highly coordinated system of traffic signals and detection equipment. Two, by redirecting all left turns from the existing Route 340 and Route 55 intersection into a quadrant roadway built to accommodate just those heavy movements. And three, signal timing savings are reinvested into the signal operations, thus allowing the automated traffic controller to assign additional signal timing to movements as they are needed. Looking south, Notice as vehicles travel into Front Royal, they don't back up onto the North Fork Bridge. This concludes the presentation portion of today's public hearing. We appreciate your time and willingness to share your ideas with us today. We hope that we have provided you with the right amount of project background and have demonstrated through our design alternatives review that the solutions being advanced for this important project have been carefully considered and that we've demonstrated the department's commitment to identifying and advancing the most cost-effective and meaningful design solution to mitigate this aging bridge structure and problematic intersection. We encourage you to now move to the exhibit area where our project engineers and planners await your questions and ideas. Again, thank you for your interest in this project and your willingness to share your ideas with us today.